Welcome back. In this video, we will implement a new activation function that is widely used in classification problems. I'm talking about the softmax activation. Before we dive in, I'd like to mention I have created a Twitter account for the channel on which I might post sneak peeks on videos I'm working on or ask you about what topics you are interested in, for instance. I think it'll make communication easier between us as the channel grows. Anyways, let's get started. As we have seen in previous videos, activation layers usually pass the input values individually inside a nonlinear function. Therefore, each output variable depends on a single input variable. That was the case for the hyperbolic tangent or the sigmoid activation, for example. Because of this, we had created a generic activation layer that only required the activation function and its derivative to work out of the box. However, the softmax activation is a bit different. Each output variable depends on all the input variables. The formula of the softmax activation is shown on the screen. The reason for which it is used in classification problems is that it makes the output similar to a probability distribution. If you sum all the y values, the result is 1. Luckily, we can efficiently implement the formula as is using NumPy. Without waiting any longer, let's implement the forward method. As I mentioned earlier, we cannot use the activation layer base class that we have created. Instead, we need to extend from the layer base class. The forward method is computed in two steps. First, we call numpy.exp to compute a vector containing the exponential values of the input variables. And second, we divide the values in that vector by the sum of its elements. Finally, the result is returned. That's it for the forward step. Now, on to the meat of the problem. How do we compute the backward step? Remember, the framework is always the same. We are given a vector containing the derivatives of the error with respect to the output. And we need to return a vector containing the derivatives of the error with respect to the input. As an example, let's calculate the derivative for a specific element of the input vector, say x sub k. Adding the contribution of each output variable and using the chain rule, we get to this. The unknown is the derivative of the output with respect to the input. For that, we need to remember the actual formula of the softmax activation. Notice how the result will be different depending on whether k is equal to i or not. If k is equal to i, then the numerator needs to be differentiated. Otherwise, it is just a constant. That's it for the first case. Now to the second, when k is different than i. Alright, we have the derivative of the softmax function. Let's see how we can work on this result to obtain something efficiently computable. Remember, we need to compute the whole vector containing the derivatives of the error with respect to the input. If we explicit each element in that vector, we get this. However, having the sum written this way, we cannot easily include the condition on the index. Therefore, we will explicitly write the sum. OK, now notice that we can already separate this matrix using a dot product. Can you see it? The column vector that we revealed is nothing but the output gradient, which is given during the backward step by the next layer. We can now replace each derivative of y with respect to x using the two formulas that we have on the top of the screen. Notice how we have special elements on the diagonal of the square matrix because of the condition we had on the indices. If you look at the first row of that matrix, you'll see it is multiplied by y1, Similarly, the second row is multiplied by y2, and so on. We can write this matrix as an element-wise product of two square matrices. Let me emphasize 
This is not a dot product. It is an element-wise product, also called a Hadamard product. We're almost there. Look at the second matrix. All the columns contain the same element, except for the diagonal, which has an extra one added to it. We can write it as the difference between the identity matrix and another matrix. And this other matrix is nothing but the first one transposed, meaning the rows became columns. If we call this matrix M, then the final result holds in a pretty small formula. And that's it for the backward step. Let's implement the backward method. We start by getting the size of the output vector. Then we create the M matrix, which is simply the output vector replicated n times. This is what numpy.tile does. Finally, we compute the formula. Mind that the multiplication sign computes an element-wise product by default. The dot product is obtained by calling the dot function in NumPy. That's it. About 13 lines of code. You could use it, for instance, on the MNIST code from last video as a last layer instead of the hyperbolic tangent. The code of the video is on a GitHub repository. The link is in the description. Don't forget to follow the Twitter account of the channel, and I'll see you next time.